Right, welcome back to the channel everybody. Hopefully everybody's doing okay. I am back on the renovation project, the one that I've started a while ago actually. Not been here for, what, five or six weeks now. So as you can see, the job has moved along quite a bit. The decorator's been in. Floor layers are actually been in today as well. Um, I've been second fixing, I've been going around, doing rads, bits like that. Um, I've also been doing the, let me show you actually. It's probably a bad idea to film the film what I've been doing at the start of the video but you'll get the idea in the video what I've sort of been doing so this is what I've done today so I've been sorting these uh, toilet units out these have been not a nightmare but what I've done is I've done away with the units and I've mounted all the clips and everything behind it built like a frame but I'll sort of show you what we've been doing as we're going along I've filmed all this with my GoPro so hopefully the footage comes out okay so what we've got on the way is blender uh, yeah Pretty, pretty basic stuff. We've put a blender on these just to control the water temperature, basically. One thing I want to say is, I've been taking these pans back out for the floor layers because we've got to ply the floor and then it's a vinyl, vinyl floor. But I just wanted to get all the panels and everything set up, just for my own peace of mind. They've actually started laying the carpets and that downstairs. So I know some of these rooms aren't quite finished yet, but the job is moving along so fast. You sometimes you just need to get in there when you can. The floor layers are absolutely fine. We sort of said, right, we'll just take the pans out. I've set the, set the panels up so the ply can slide underneath it. Um, but yeah, so sometimes you just have to do what you have to do. You just have to get on sometimes. The John has actually just told me one thing that I'm actually annoyed about. Not much annoys me, but when other trades screw you over, that's what annoys me. Apparently, the electricians have gone through my pipes here. They've not, they've not said anything to me, but apparently they've cut through a circular saw. I don't know why they've had them boards back up, whether they've missed, obviously there's a socket there, but I thought that lot was done. So yeah, I'll have to lift that up. They were actually gonna start underlaying in here. So, I don't know, they can't put the carpet down in there anyway, because it's not glossed. But yeah, that's what I've sort of been doing today. Um, and it's just, just been busy really, you know, you know what it's like. These, yeah, I've just been doing tower rails. I've done these, like this, because basically, I know I could use corner valves, but they, they look okay, they look okay. We've done all the others on these houses like that, so they are what they are. As long as the pipes come out straight and they'll be decorated, and that's fine. That's sort of the standard sort of spec. Anyway, I'm probably gonna stop babbling, because, um, well, it's the end of the day actually, but I'm actually gonna stop late and have a good tidy up on site, because it's a little bit of a mess. So, um, hopefully, this, hopefully this video turns out okay. I filmed it all with a GoPro. It does actually, I think it makes for a better video, uh, but it just takes me ages to edit. Um, Hence why I've not been using it for the last like four or five weeks because I've been, just been too busy, basically. I've not had a lot of time at night. Well, I've not had any time at night because I've been working late to sort of sit down and edit everything. So the GoPro does make for a better video. I'm going to start using it again. So hopefully you enjoy this one. As always, thank you for watching. And I'll stop rambling and we'll get into the video. Right, I'm just setting this toilet boxing up in this one. What I'm going to do, same as the other one, take these clips off, mount these behind I just have to nibble the plasterboard out a little bit so you can still pull all the panels off so we're effectively doing away with this frame because I don't want the toilet stuck out uh, eight inches into the room so the toilet will fit flat back on this this panel here and everything's still accessible so it's just basically doing away with that and then mounting everything back because I think it looks a lot nicer than having that stuck out so yeah um I'll sort of show you what we do what we go as we go along and I'll show you how I sort of set the flush pipe and the pan connector and stuff up. But yeah, other than that, it should be fairly fairly straightforward. But as I say, I've already done the one through there and I'll try and get some shots as I go along on this one. Right, first thing I'm going to do is just jigsaw around this panel. Obviously, you've got to be careful with these because this is your finished panel. You want to do it, I've seen it before where people have just drilled a hole for the flush pipe and then cut one for the pan connector. The problem with that is you can't lift that panel up. So I, all I do is jigsaw all the way around um, make obviously making sure you don't go with that outside your panel otherwise you'll see it uh, but that's fairly obvious and then we can drop that panel on after once we've got the pan and everything set up what I'm also going to do is I'm not actually screwing the pans down because I need to take them back out so they can do the floor but I need everything sort of set up and I want everything tested um, they're coming to do the floor next week so we'll just leave them we'll leave them out or leave them loose so they can still put the floor underneath them we'll just screw the pan in at the end um, but yeah, I'll get this one cut round quickly and then I'll show you how I'll set the brackets up. So what I've done is obviously just cut that out, what we'll do. 
the other one I packed, I packed up a couple of mil yeah see it's not level so I packed that up a couple of mil so the plywood can slide underneath it anyway make sure that's level draw around it and then we'll mark where the brackets are going and I'll effectively fix some bits of wood on the side so that panel will just drop down and in so I just remounted the brackets on the side of the timber so we want the hooky bits if that makes sense sounding technical now 45 mil in from the edge of the panel so they will let me get it right they'll just hook on like that so i'll space them off on the back of the panel if i can do it one-handed so they they'll sit something like that and that, that will hook on basically the same as what it was on there but just on there and then we'll do the same at the top for these ones and then we can just drop them panels on then right so fix that panel in position just on the lift off clip so it will we'll just lift on and off we'll just lift on and off so we can slide that in after what i'll do next is i'm going to put a piece of saw pipe in that pan connector because uh, obviously you can't push a pan connector straight into a socket end it's just not tight enough and we'll set the we'll set the flush pipe and everything up um and then we can sort of get the pan position and then we'll look at the front panel last there's a ceramic mark straight across the lip of the pan. Can you see that? Or the rim? Hopefully that rubs off. It's quite. It's actually quite a bad one. It's where they stack the pans. That's just a ceramic rubber. Normally you can get them out, but it's going to take a little bit of work. That. I'll see if I can get that out. You can see it runs all the way across. I'll give that a rub for a couple of minutes. Right, I've managed to completely polish that out. Just a ceramic rubber. If you're asking the merchants, they generally give you one. Um, but yeah, I can go over that again, but can you see it? No, you can't even see it. I will go over it again, just to double check, but... A bit of toothpaste sometimes helps on them as well. But yeah, you won't be able to tell. It's just where they stack the pans and then one rubs against the other. They are all bubble wrapped up, but I don't know why they do it. But yeah, it's perfect now. I wouldn't fit it if I weren't happy, but you'll never be able to tell. I normally use this box cutter to cut these flush pipes now. It cuts them pretty well, so... Just score around like that. That's it. Oh. Easiest way to measure these flush pipes. Just measure, put a level across the back of your pan and measure the insertion depth. So it's 70 mil, and then we just transfer that mark 70 mil and then cut it off cut it off at 70 mil that's it uh, just put a line on the edge of your pan line on the edge you fix in obviously make sure your pan's in the middle because then you can screw your brackets through and then you haven't got to move the pan back out again then right so i'm using a flexi pan connector on this i'm not 100 percent fan of them but it's generally upstairs you're okay it's more downstairs where the rats tend to them so Always put a piece of soil pipe into your socket end, otherwise it's not going to be a tight fit. You see how that fits nice and tight? Um, yeah, if you put it into a socket end, there's a chance it's going to leak. So, flex pan connector does make life a bit easier, to be fair. And all we do, put our rubber push pipe on. Now what we'll do is... You, I know you guys probably can't see very well, but it's all gone into the back of the pan and into the connector. And then we'll give this a flush. Make sure we've got no leaks. Which we have in. Yeah, 
that's it. So pan connector all the way in, flush pipe all the way in, and no gap at the back. And we just need to set the top up. I'm going to take this pan back out for the floor layers, but it just gives you an idea what we're doing. Right, I've just got the button set up now. The whole saw I always use is it's probably about wore out. What size is it? It's two and a half inches, and that is the perfect size. I know it looks tight, but when you actually put the whole saw through, it makes it a little bit larger. What you want to do is obviously not mark your front panel. You need to drill it from front to back, but you want to make it so the button doesn't hit, hit on that clip, but you want to keep it tight to the right hand side, otherwise it will hit when you lift your toilet seat up. So you clip your, your back nut wants to be about there. So we just measure from, from the edge to the center of the back nut, middle of the panel that way. And yeah, it should just miss the toilet seat then. That's how I always do mine. Generally put them on the right, because most people are right-handed. You can put them on the left, but or in the middle, but then it hits your toilet seat. So that's where I always put mine. As you'll see, this is the perfect size hole saw for that cutter. So that just fits in there lovely. I know it looks small, but it, when you go through it, it wiggles it a little bit and it's perfect. So all I need to do now is set my hoses up, make sure that doesn't roll off and hit my pan. Uh, set the hoses up and that's job done. As you can see, it just misses the clip. That's how you need them really, otherwise it hits the toilet seat. And that's why you always drill front to back because it will always spout you. With these hoses, wherever I've put them, I always shorten them down. If you don't shorten them down, what happens is the toilets tend to overrun. So it can look like the ball valve or the flush valve's leaking. It's generally because there's air pressure left in the hose. So you want, I can't remember the packet one handed, but you want to keep them hoses shorter than that. I normally cut them in half and that's ample. I went to one once, I put a new flush valve, new ball valve in and the pan kept trickling. I think it was just because the hoses were too long and the like pneumatic air in the thing was just lifting the flush valve up a little bit. It was weird, but ever since then, I've always cut them down. And that's how I've always done them, never had another problem. So you cannot see that mark, that porcelain scratch on that pan now, it's completely gone. Obviously I would never leave it, I would just change the pan. But if you can get away with not doing, obviously it saves you a little bit of aggravation. But look, there's no indentation or anything, all it is is just porcelain. So... I'm going to get the floor put down, back down now and get that basin in. And we get the bath in as well. That looks, that looks nice actually. I quite like that. It'd look weird if you had the unit coming out. I just think that looks like it's meant to be there. Right, I'm just setting up this basin unit now. What I've done is fixed it at the back so it's perfectly level and perfectly plumb. What we've, what we've got to do is put blenders underneath these to control the water temperature. Because the two tap hole, you can't really get, well, I don't, I don't think you can get thermostatic two tap hole taps, not to my knowledge. So blender's the best option anyway. What I've done, drilled them through the bottom of the unit, we'll get a couple of pipe collars. Obviously service valves so you can work on the blender. We've got hot coming in, that's mixed out. The cold, we'll just swing it up, offset. T, T there somewhere and then into the cold and then pick the, pick the tap up off the cold. Won't use flexes, I'll just do that with rigid, rigid copper tails. Um, keep that above the shelf so it's easier to work on and then we'll just cut cut the shelf out with a couple of little couple of little bits there and that's how I've done all the others really. Um, so yeah, just one once and ring, that pipe's nice and solid there. And that's how they're done. So nice and easy to work on, always trying to think about the next person because it might be you. And yeah, other than that, all this does, we need these blenders between 39 and 41, just so nobody gets burnt when they're opening the hot tap. I'll get a couple of shots as we go along. So this is our cold swinging across the top. Um, Solder your bits close to your blender out position, otherwise you just melt it. A little bit of jet blue on there, if I can find it. That stuff, jet blue. Don't need a lot. Thank <laughs> you. 
flux brush is older than most of you, I guess. I've had that one years. To be honest, it's not even that much slower using uh, thick toes, and I, I always think it's a better job anyway. Well, it is a better job, but there's no, there's no two ways about it. I'll make jaw dropper for tying them tap connectors up. One end fits your, your tap connector and the other end fits your back nuts the, uh, for your tap. So obviously I'm not going to be able to film under there because you're never going to be able to get an angle. But it's the best tool I've found uh, for, tightening, for tightening them up. I've had that well since I started. I've had it 14 years. They do a, in the box you get a three quarter one as well for your bath, uh, for your bath taps. They fit pretty much every tap connector and every back nut I've ever found apart from the speed fit ones. But I don't use speed fit anyway so... Yeah, I just get them tightened up and then we can get the water on and then we just got the waste to run in. But other than that, that's done. I always silicone my waste kits in. I do away with these rubber washers, but one thing of note on these, the hole, the overflow hole is only at the back. So you just need to make sure that slot on your slotted waste lines up with the hole. Otherwise, it, you can see it's solid all the way around, apart from the back. So you just need to make sure one of the slots lines up with that. That's the only thing. So most of them are slotted all the way around, so it doesn't matter where you put that, but some of them it does. So plug and chain in, I'll silicon that in. Don't use the washers. I know some people use plumbers, mate. Some people use them base and mate things, but I always use, just use silicon, and I've never had a problem. Never had a problem getting one out either. So everybody does them different. That's how I do mine. And then we just got to pile the waste up. So I first fix my waste in inch and a half. So what I always do, just where it comes into the unit, just put an elbow, plenty of glue in there. That's just an inch and a half by inch and a quarter reducer. And just reduce them down. Somebody says, oh, why do you use inch and a half? Hey, drop that, it's not going to drop that. It's obviously less likely to block up, and obviously, you probably can't see anyway, but I'll just send that across there like that. And then just one inch and a quarter 90 and it keeps everything out of the way of the blender you can still work on that then so i just run this, run this bit in and we can test everything then and then it uses cutting to be honest probably one of the best things i bought that i'm not sponsored or anything so it's just i always used to use that saw and that thing is so much quicker Whatever saves you time, saves you a little bit of money. Piece 130. 
Sorry about the dodgy camera work. Getting high. Don't go sniffing the loop. It's like, why are you so happy? Because I've been doing waste all day. And this thing just supposed to like center your trap. You don't actually have to use it. It's just they come with the macau. Is it macau pine or poly pine? Poly pine. Actually. Moment of truth, it shouldn't leak, he says. Yeah, we knew we'd be alright. I've got my hot off downstairs actually. I need to have a good tidy out in the bottom of that unit, but it will all wash out. It's only it's only sawdust and stuff. And uh, I just run this waste in. We'll give it a go. to me. Yeah, that's fine. I completely didn't have time to film the bath installation. I'm so sorry about that. Um, I did actually do one a while ago, which is the same as this. So I'll leave a little link for the video description. As you can see, the, the floor layers wanted to get in. They applied all the floor and they've used like leveling compounds to make it smoother because um, the floor wasn't very good underneath. But they've sorted all that anyway. As you can see, the bath's all in, um, got the shower, all that set up. So yeah, I did, did half fill it with water, but the next, it's the next day now. Um, so obviously the plug was letting by a little bit, but it's not the end of the world. Um, just wanted to say thank you so much for watching. It really does mean a lot, all the support. Uh, if you enjoyed this one, make sure you hit the like button. If you didn't hit the dislike button, we'll see you next time. Thank you so much for watching.